Do you want to save thousands of dollars on your next car purchase? Find out how much you can save and why buying a traditional petrol or diesel car is going to be a bad idea. G'day, my name is Chris and I cover from an Australian perspective, technologies like electric vehicles and more. Please subscribe as it generally supports the channel. And I hope to see you at Fully Charged Live in Sydney, March 11 and 12. Use the referral link below to save yourself 10% on your next ticket purchase. The electric car discount bill passed on Friday the 25th of November will cost government in forward estimates more than $90 million for the next four years, which means fringe benefit tax on electric cars, including hydrogen, and for a small period of time, plug-in hybrid vehicles, will not be payable. It covers vehicles co costing up to $84,916, which must be new and not used before the 1st of July, 2022. This is important, so hang around to the end as some viewers out there should be doing something right now to save themselves thousands of dollars. Now, a few notes about this legislation. First, and might I say, Thankfully, plug-in hybrid vehicles will not be eligible for this incentive after April 1, 2025. Sole traders can't apply for it either, and whilst there is no end date on the bill, there is a note whereby a review needs to be conducted at year three. So maybe get moving. Okay, so for those unsure what a novated lease or salary sacrifice vehicle is, best put is a three-way agreement between an employee, an employer, and financing company whereby a vehicle is leased by the employer, but the employee pays for it using pre-tax income. This reduces the amount of income tax they pay. That means the more you earn, the higher the cost of the car value, along with increasing fringe benefit tax costs, the greater the savings will be. Salary sacrifice or no vetted leasing is typically available for those working in public sector or some private companies who may also offer it. Oh, an important note, whilst I'll be providing some examples in this video from actual no vetted leasing companies, please do get professional advice and see if it's right for you. But nonetheless, the impact of the electric car discount bill will be really good as it's going to be having no fringe benefits tax to be payable, so individuals will save thousands of dollars. Hang around to see how much very soon. The other side to this bill is companies who provide a vehicle to employees uh, for work purposes who may also drive their car home every night and get it fueled and paid for by the business. This would normally be a costly exercise for the company and employee as it represents a potential financial benefit, in addition to like wages, and so it's not therefore subject like income tax. And in turn, that would mean a fringe benefit tax is attracted to it. But this bill changes that and it will save them, that is the company, on average about $10,000 per year per vehicle. Wow. So I reckon the diesel U is going bye bye if you ask me. So here's how it works. Scenario, two people, one is called Joe, the other Jim. Both want to buy a Tesla Model 3, which costs $67,225 with GST and delivery costs, sand, other charges. So let's just say a bit over $71,000 drive away. Both will drive 15,000 kilometers a year and finance their purchase by borrowing money to get it. They'll pay the majority of the car off over four years, leaving a 30% residual or balloon payment at the end to either sell the car and settle any debt owing, or trade it in and get a new one, continuing the cycle of borrowing money to have a nice car. Okay, let's explore Joe's journey. He does a normal car loan, assume a salary of $60,000 a year. On that, he's taxed about $9,967 before paying Medicare levy and other stuff. So for simplicity, he's got a usable salary of $50,033. Now, now he pays for his car loan of $1,216.15 per month. That's $15,133 per year. But add to that annual costs of insurance, electricity, tires, maintenance, and rego, Joe's brand new Model 3 is actually going to cost him $19,083 per year or average out $1,590 per month. Now, let's shift to Joe's brother, Jim, who is fortunate as he can do a novated or salary sacrifice lease. He too is also paid $60,000 a year 
Now, before the taxman takes his cut and reduces Jim's usable income, the Novated Leasing Company takes car repayments out of Jim's salary. But that also includes cost covering insurance, electricity, rego, tyres and maintenance. Furthermore, because Novated Leasing Companies get things GST free, it means that the Tesla Model 3 has more than $6,000 taken off its pre drive away price. And with thanks to this new legislation, people who do Novated Leasing don't have to pay fringe benefit tax on it. Meaning car repayments are just $968 with all running costs per month all rolled in. Compare the difference, $968 versus $1,590. One pays almost $10,000 to the tax man, then pays for his car. The other saves more than $9,000 per year in avoided taxes, or better put, $36,000 across a four year agreement. Also for Jim, as his car loan and costs are taken out pre-salary, that reduces his reportable salary from $60,000 down to $53,032, which could have benefits in other elements of his life, like reduced Medicare levy, family assistance benefit, and more. But that's really variable, and again, seek financial guidance before jumping in. Now, for those who are fortunate and can do no added leasing or obtain a fleet car, let's compare Jim's Tesla Model 3 story to this new guy, John, who crazily wants to finance a petrol or diesel vehicle for the same money. John, like Joe and Jim, also earns $60,000. And yes, I, I don't know how any of them can be affording a $70,000 car, but stick with me. Same stuff, four year term, 30% residual, all running costs included in the Novated lease, meaning costs are covered like fuel, servicing, insurance, retro, etc. He'll pay $1,468 per month or $17,616 per year. Jim, $11,616. That's a saving of more than $6,000 per year. Remembering, we're talking about cars of the same price. There's no depreciation factor in here whatsoever. Over a four year lease, Jim is gonna save more than $24,000 compared to John. So if you're thinking of getting a new car and can salary sacrifice it, you'll be mad to buy a petrol or diesel variant. This bill is going to change the types of cars we see on our roads. It's going to impact our lives and change the way many see electric cars. For those who don't care about the health benefits of EVs, there's no PM2.5, no CO2 footprint, or well, that's at least 50% better compared to traditional petrol and diesel cars. Money. Money is what drives most consumers. And this bill is going to change people's mindsets about them 100%, like a complete 180 flip. This bill will make buying a petrol or diesel vehicle seem like a dumb idea. One that costs tens of thousands of dollars more over a typical loan period. Here's some big numbers to keep in mind. New car sales make up 51.8% of all car purchases. Of those, just 3% were electric in 2021. Fleet buyers constitute more than 50% of new car buyers. The average car runs on our roads for 15 to 20 years. Typically, Novated leases actually change the cars every three to four years, meaning the second-hand car market will have a deluge of EVs in 2025 or 2026, and luckily more than 50% of car buyers buy second-hand cars. So instead of petrol or diesel car being the car of choice, we will actually be seeing them to be, well, very much unattractive because the way Bowser prices are going, they're gonna be crazy expensive to keep fueling and keep going. Whereas there'll be a really large offering of electric vehicles, which will be, I think, price-wise equivalent, if not better than the petrol counterparts. And yes, my keyboard naysayers, running it in EV is about one fifth the cost of a petrol or diesel equivalent because they're extremely efficient at converting that stored electricity into motion by a factor of two or three to one. Add to that lower maintenance costs, no emissions, cleaner air, quieter streets, and a lifetime CO2 footprint less than half that of a petrol diesel car. You, you can see why government is supporting people into EVs. The repercussions of this bill is not just for those fortunate to run a company or who can salary for sacrifice. No, it will benefit all of us for years to come as car makers will hear businesses demand from them more choice, 
cheaper varieties, all of which will help drive down the cost for Australian consumers. We just need to get over this little hurdle we have right now where there's only like about 40 different EVs available in Australia compared to the 100 plus overseas. Add to that some legislation for vehicle emissions and internal combustion engine ban by 2030 or 2035 remembering how long cars actually stay on the road. This bill is a step in the right direction and finally recalling my intro about how the bill covers vehicles purchased on or after July 1 this year. That means if you you got delivery of your EV on or after this date um, and well you, you, you should be calling your company now and saying are you passing on these savings to me now because it's literally going to save you tens of thousands of dollars across your lease period. All right I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you haven't already please do subscribe because I cover stuff like this and electric vehicles and uh, it really does generally help the channel by you just smashing that thumb button, ask me a question, I'll see if I can help you out. I'm taking the Victorian Government to the High Court of Australia February 14 to 16 next year and trying to get rid of, of the world's dumbest tax, that is the electric vehicle tax. And um, if you want to know more about that case, maybe click this card up here and toward the one on the end screen too will help you out as well. Otherwise, if you want to see behind the scenes, news, polls and stuff you just don't get here on YouTube, consider supporting me on Patreon or as a YouTube member where you get all this and a lot more. And as per usual, you be good and you be great.